Hi, this is Professor Karen Lin. In this video, I'm going to talk about what's the difference between bad debt allowances and bad debt expenses. Now, on the textbook, bad debt allowances has a longer name. It's called the Allowances for Uncollectible Account or uh, um, Allowances for Doubtful Accounts. So, um, to simplify it, I just call them bad debt allowances and bad debt expenses. First of all, these two accounts are different in nature. Um, the bad debt allowances account is a counter asset account. So which means if you look at the balance sheet, um, the company would report accounts receivable and it would also record um, uh, the bad debt allowances. So the total accounts receivable, for example, for Levi's is 544201000 million in 2018. The allowances was 10 Three, seven, and um, the net uh, uh, receivable account is five three four one sixty four million. The meaning of these numbers are um, during the operation of the firm, starting from day one that the firm establishes, um, the firm has altogether five forty four two oh one million dollars that someone else owed the firm. Okay, that's the gross account receivable which means it's the num uh, amount of money that the firm is entitled to receive in the future according to the purchase contract. However, based on the history, the firm knows that someone is not going to pay us back, so the firm has set aside some reserves. That's called the allowances. So that's 10 plus million uh, dollars set aside. So the total receivables according to the contract, subtract subtracting the expectation of um, the default, gives us the receivable that uh, the net receivable means it's the receivable the company um, would expect to receive. So basically, you can see, first of all, allowances account is um, an account that works against the account receivable um, in the gross value to bring us the net value. Second of all, allowances account is the expectation that other people would default. So the company set aside um, amount of money just to cope with those situations. So that is um, allowances. So allowances sort of like an asset account, but it's on the other direction. So it's called contra asset account. Now you can see um, another point is that the allowances account is also cumulative because it's on the balance sheets. To summarize what I just said, um, Bad debt allowances is an asset account, although it's a contra asset account. It's the expectation of default, and it's accumulated number of all the bad debt um, allowances from day one of the company establishes. Okay, now what are the bad debt expenses, right? Bad debt expenses are um, an expense account, obviously. So if we go back to what we have learned before, what does an expense account really mean? An expense account means um, the cost or the resources that spend to generate the revenue. So remember, expenses are recognized based on a matching principle. And expenses are also only for one period. It's a temporary account that are going to be closed at the end of the period, which means it's going to be reset to zero at the end of the period. If you look at uh, Levi's Dalco account, you can see the relationship between bad debt expense and the allowances. Basically, the end um, period allowances equals to the beginning balance allowances, adding any expenses, subtracting deductions uh, where it's the write-off, that equals to the ending. So, so you can see the relationship of uh, allowances we, if we ignore the deduction, okay? It's the beginning plus the newly charged expenses um, that equals to the ending. That means allowances, as I mentioned before, allowances is a cumulative number so it is accumulating from the start, uh, starting point of the period, uh, adding the newly charged expenses. So expenses is a newly added number to this period and only for this period. And after the charge, this number will carry forward in the ending uh, balance if I ignore the deduction just to simplify the situation. So, so that is the, the difference or the relationship between uh, the allowances and the expenses. Okay, to summarize what I just said, um, the bad debt expense is an expense account, obviously, and it's an expectation of default, uh, the same as the allowances. However, it is the newly generated expectation for this current period. 
So when you recognize this expense, it's matching to the revenue that you just generated for this current period. Now we will talk about two different methods, but uh, this is the baseline to understand the, the idea of an expense. Finally, expenses are non-cumulated. They only, they only work for one period. So next period, they are reset to zero and start over again. So there are a couple of different methods to estimate the bad debt expense and then allowances. But no matter which way you are doing the allowances and expense, um, the relationship uh, beginning plus uh, the newly charges subtracting the deductions equals to the ending will uh, maintain. So the first um, method is the, the uh, sales method. In the sales method, uh, basically percentage of sales, you estimate bad debt expense that expense using um, a percentage of the credit sales okay only the credit sales if you do a cash sales it's, it does not count so the idea is that to give our credit sales our company incurred cost the cost is that the risk that someone is not going to pay us back so that is why we recognize the better expense because we expect someone will not pay us back although we don't know who the percentage is based on historical credit, right? Um, now, here is an example. In this example, um, we use the credit sales percentage method and assuming the company has a credit sales in 2019 for $700,000. And the past experience, 3% is uncollected. So your expectation of uncollectible account for the 2019, pay attention, this is only for the first, for the 2019, uh, because we are talking about 2019. So for 2019, um, we expect 3% of the credit sales, 700,000, will not be collected, that is $21,000. Now, how would that affect our equation, right? The $21,000, first of all, as we mentioned, it would uh, add to our expenses, right? The bad debt expense. Now, this bad debt expense will reduce the retained earnings, which is affect our right right hand side of the equation. And then you would also see another side of the equation is under the assets. That goes back to what I have just said. Um, the allowances account is a contra asset account. So they are listed under assets, but it's a negative number. So the increase of the allowances is a decrease of the assets. And so you have a decrease of asset and decrease of retained earnings. So to summarize what I just said, you will see that the percentage sales method will generate the better expense based on the newly generated credit sales during the period, which is 2019 in uh, the example that I just talked about. Another way to do um, um, the, the uh, doubtful accounts, I mean, the allowances and the better expense is to use something called the aging analysis, which is more commonly used in reality because aging analysis take a look at what is the total receivables for the company um, at the end of this period and take a look at um, the age of those uh, different account receivables. For example, this company 2019 has altogether $100,000 account receivable. Now pay attention. This, these are not the newly generated, okay? These are not the newly generated credit sales account receivable. But these are the accounts receivable from all different periods. So now you take a look at, at the end of period, how much credit sales do I have ever get given and has not been collected, right? So you will see the current, which it means very liquid, very closely uh, generated, uh, you have $50,000. Which you and then you have one to sixty days past due, thirty thousand, sixty to ninety days past due, fifteen thousand, and so on. So those is those are the component of your aging uh, analysis. Now again, this one hundred thousand is not the newly generated credit sales; it's the credit sales from day one of your company that has not been recovered. Compared to in the prior example, this. $700,000 credit sales, which means accounts receivable, are only newly generated during 2019. So those are the difference between these two methods. 
in the credit sales method, you only look at the credit sales that's given during the current year that you're calculating for. But in the aging, you look at holistically all the accounts receivable or all the credit sales that's still outstanding um, starting from day one of your company. And then for each group, you each group of the status of the loan, you're going to estimate from the history how much is going to be uncollectible. Now, of course, the longer it's outstanding, the, the, the more percentage you should assign to that group because it's more likely you cannot receive, right? So you, you multiply the current and the percentage, you get the uncollectible account, you add them up, that is your total estimated um, allowances. Now, compared to what I just said a moment ago, uh, the 3% expectation for the current year under the credit sales method this 21,000 is the, the, um, the expenses for the current method, uh, current year. But if you have, uh, estimated using the aging method, uh, this 2,900 is not the expense because you, again, go back to what I said a moment ago, philosophically, um, what is an expense? An expense is something that you, um, you are going to match with the current period's revenue, right? However, are all these credit sales generated during the current period? The answer is no. So this number is not corresponding to the current period, but it's corresponding to uh, the whole period starting from day one because your benchmark group, your baseline group, uh, or your base for calculation is starting from day one. So what you have calculated is the ending balance of um, the allowances, which means, so if you look at the uh, equation we talked about before, allowances at the end equals to the beginning plus the newly generated expenses subtracting deduction, which we usually ignore, uh, equals to the ending. So this 29,000, 2,900 is actually the ending balance of the allowances, okay? So now how do I know the expenses? If I ignore this deduction, I assume deduction is zero. What is my um, allowances expense? It depends on the allowances at the beginning, right? So you need to know the allowances at the beginning. So the question tells us um, there is a there is a balance in the allowances eight, uh, for $400 already. So basically, it tells us the allowances at the beginning has $400 in it. Now, what is the bad debt expense? It would just be, right? You can solve this. It would just be 2,900 subtracting 400. That should be 2,500. So you can see this newly generated or the adjustment of your expectation. Your expectation at the beginning is $400, but at the end of the period, because based on your calculation, it becomes 2,900. So now you know you, the adjustment of your expectation changes from 400 to 2900 the newly generated uh bad debt expense or the, the expectation would be 2500. so the equation again would just replicate what you have seen in the uh, credit sales uh, method which means you will see the 2500 would reduce would increase the bad debt expense and reducing the net income in turn reducing retained earnings and also re reducing the asset through the allowances for doubtful accounts, bad debt allowances. So to summarize, if I use the, to summarize what I just said in this video, one, allowances account is an asset account and it's cumulative. And the expenses account is non-cumulative and expense account. They both are about expectations, but the allowances is about expectation from day one and um, expenses uh, reflects the expectation adjustment uh, for only this period. And then if you use the percentage of sales method because the calculation base is only the accounts receivable you have during the current period. So you are going to use the percentage multiplied by the accounts receivable newly generated this period and make that expenses because the base of your calculation is based on this period only. But if you use the aging method, what you are calculating uh, is based on all the accounts receivable starting from day one. 
So your calculation re calculation result reflects the expectation for all periods starting from day one. So that gives you the ending balance of allowances. And how do you find out about the expense? You have to you need to know the beginning balance to find out the better expense. If you don't know the beginning expense, uh, you don't know the beginning allowances, you won't be able to find out the better expense. So once you find out the difference between the two, uh, the effect to the accounting equation is, is the same. Uh, the expenses will increase, uh, which decreases retained earnings, and the allowances account would decrease um, to the asset accounts. All right, I hope this video helps and um, thank you for watching.